Hey folks, so today I'm finally doing the video on how to check your valve clearances. Uh, so to start you need your bike. Uh, you don't need it on a stand, you can leave it on the side stand but it should be easier with it on a, a paddock stand. And you will need tools. I don't know what I'll need so I'll just go through it as I go. And you'll also need feeler gauges. So start by removing the seat and the side panels okay now that the side panels are off you need to pull that off and just pulls off with a big good tug um, you'll need to take the side panels off as well to get the to get the airbox bolts so we need to remove the airbox and this little bolts here because there's a I think there's an airbox bolt behind there and one thing to note is that this needs done on a stone cold engine um, so if you've been running it probably leave it for the next day or four or five hours maybe or something you know um, so yeah off with these bits okay so a little word of advice when taking the right side cover off of the uh, of the tank the little clip here probably best to remove that or unclip it first before you try and yank it out of there because then you'll avoid this just broke it so carry on uh, remove the regulator rectifier thing because uh, the bolt for the uh, tank is the uh, airbox is just in here next up is the airbox so there's four bolts that one, there's one in there, and one on the other side, and one there as well. And then you've got <laughs> Jubilee clips just in there, so it'll be this one here. So, like I said, this is a royal pain in the ass last time I've done this. Um, I've had to take out the seat uh, stays, where the seat like rests on or whatever, uh, to pull the airbox out. Now I've got to get a screwdriver in here and pop this hose out so I can get it completely out of the way and it'd be a good idea to stick a rag or a sandwich bag over the intake just to stop any dirt or shit getting in okay so taking the breather pipe off the air box is going to be a pain in the dick so I'll just let it hang uh, right, we need to take this off so that we can get in a bit of clearance in down here and to get these pipes out of the way as well Okay, removing the breather from the airbox was stupid, fiddly shit. Like, I'd recommend doing the EVAP or SAS delete. That'll be next on my list. Uh, so, um, so I've taken that off. There's two cable ties around here. Just snip them and then they just slide off because they're covered in oil and shit. Uh, and I've got a power commander fitted, so this, this loom uh here with the braided stuff on uh that goes to the coils so unplug the coils and then remove them mm, i think i'll just leave that pipe on see how we get on uh, so yeah off with them so with the coils unplugged now to remove the coils themselves so there's two screws one there and one in there so with a good tug the coils just come straight out just kind of give it a wiggle as you're pulling it out and come straight out and there's the spark plugs so I'm going to be changing my spark plugs Not because it needs it just because I want to okay next up uh, is to remove the valve cover so uh, at this point you might want to take the opportunity to clean it uh, clean off the, the valve cover uh, just to stop any muck getting into the valve train area uh, so I used a like wheel brush just to knock off any loose crap and then just blow it out a bit uh, just to save any problems in the future so, uh, this uh, valve cover is three bolts, one, two, three, and it should just be a tug to pull it off. Okay, so that's the valve cover out. 
and as always that was needlessly difficult uh, the way I just pulled it out I, I think you need to like get those cables out of the way and those ones uh, the way I just pulled it out was like that way so it's gonna be a bit of a faff to get in I think but I kind of got the gist of it so it kind of goes in that way and just give it some death but be careful not to break it uh, but yes just came out like that it's made of anyway I think it's just made of plastic maybe magnesium don't know but yes that's that right uh, next I want to take a spark plug out uh, so that we can turn over the engine to find top dead center okay just taking one spark plug out it looks pretty healthy not too brown and not white so all good on the running front uh, now I'm going to take this beast out it's just plastic uh, bolt nut type thing and you will need a 14 mil allen key or hex tool thing um, so yeah hopefully these aren't made of cheese ah they're not excellent okay so with the plastic bit out of there you then need a 12 mil socket it's on here and you want to turn it anti-clockwise uh, to line up the top dead center bits so this little dot needs to line up with that arrow and there should be something on here too to line up with that arrow so let's just get it turned around don't want it to jump ah there it is so I'm going to get that mark lined up with this arrow as well so mine was almost at top dead centre tiny bit more and there we go the intake side is 0.1 mil to 0.15 mil um, or 0 0.004 inches to 0 0.059 inches something like that uh, that's on the intake side so Give that a poke it. Pokey, pokey, pokey. Okay, that one's fine. Try it to the other side. Oops. Okay, so the bit we're aiming for is between the cam, uh, cam lobe and that little rocker arm. So that's where you need to poke the uh, feeler gauge. So. So we are between 0 0.1 and 0 0.15. So intake is in tolerance. So that's good. This is what we like. Yep, that side is good. About the same. Can't get that in at all. Nope. Okay. Now for the exhaust. Okay, so the exhaust side 
is between 0 0.20 or 0.2 and 0.25 mil. Uh, I've just checked it and mine is again within tolerance so all good but to check the exhaust side it's a bit of a faff uh, that little plastic thing is in the way um, but you can still get in uh, so poke it in like that you just see the rocker arm thing uh, and the shim so it just goes between the two and so this is the point two, so it goes in fine, and it's a bit of a faff to get that one in, but it is doable, even with one hand, maybe, yes, no, yes, no. Yep, even with one hand. So, that one goes in, that's fine, but the point two five it's just a little bit too tight uh, to try and squeeze in. So on my next valve check at, I don't know, 10,000, 12,000 miles, um, I think I might need to change the uh, exhaust shims, uh, but the intake ones were fine. So that is that. So I'm just going to replace my spark plugs uh, and the little fuel filter in here. Uh, it's running a bit funny, so... I just want to change them. Okay, so once you've done all the valves, it's just a case of do whatever you've done, but in reverse to put it back together. Um, the valve cover went in a hell of a lot easier than it come out, so uh, yeah, you just pull it from the valve uh, cam chain side, and you get the bits of cables and stuff out of the way, um, and pull it up from that side, and it will just come out. Um, just give it a good wiggle and jobs are good uh, so yeah just put it back together uh, so if you've uh, found my video useful uh, please hit like and subscribe and the bell and icon for notifications uh, hopefully I'll be doing some more uh, how-to videos and information videos uh, pretty soon so cheers for watching